Let me say up front to the majority of Christian conservative Trump presidency supporters that you have every right in Christ to rejoice that July 13th, 2024 was not Donald J. Trump's time to depart this life. And I'm sure your heart is grieved over the loss of Fire Chief Corey Comparatori, a hero to his wife and daughters who survived because of his selfless act of shielding them from sniper fire. This is for them too. I think that sometimes we as Bible-believing Christian conservatives go too far in our negative appraisals and criticisms of other conservatives who staunchly support President Trump and who boldly salute the American flag. And this is not to say that there is never a reason to criticize conservatism or patriotism. Surely, as in all things that are not anchored in the person of Christ, there has been and will be some sin, foolishness, moral failure, and declension. And of course, there are fanatics and those who literally make idols of men like Trump. But every popular or polarizing person has people like that. Yet such extreme devotees are almost always in the minority. Most people who love Michael Jackson don't moonwalk around in penny loafers, sparkly socks, wearing one glove and a jerry curl. Most fans of Michael Jordan and other top players will never even own a $200 pair of J's or purchase a $23,000 courtside season ticket. And most people who support Donald J. Trump do not wear MAGA hats or compare him to Jesus or believe that he is America's savior, especially not most Christians who vote for him. We, and I emphasize we, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Christ Jesus is the only man who can save a person, a country, and a world. For that matter, President Trump even continues to say the same thing. But we who are in Christ continually pray, asking God to do something about those who literally make it their goal to push for policies and legislation that blatantly defy and even blasphemes God. And yet, if we pray, then turn around and shoot down any sign of possibility that our prayers are being answered. Or worse, if we claim to be praying for all men, for rulers and for all who are in authority, as 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 commands us, while harboring hatred in our hearts for them, then are we really praying to a God who already knows our hearts? Sadly and even hypocritically, in our constant negative criticisms of Trump and his staunch supporters, we excoriate with the broadest brush the very same people, were we given the choice, whose neighborhoods and cities we would rather live in, whose companies we would rather work at, whose daycares, schools, and teachers we would rather entrust our children to while we work, and whose businesses we would choose to spend our money with. These are the majority of people out there supporting and voting for Trump. And I defy anyone to prove to me otherwise. And hey, I realize that I could be wrong on some of this. But you know what? I'm not nearly as afraid of being proven wrong as I am afraid of being afraid to say and stand on what I believe is right. So here is who this short message is specifically to. It is to the many Christian conservatives out there who would like to be more vocal about why we support a Trump presidency, but who have been made to feel by other Christians, family, friends, co-workers, and social media acquaintances that we should be silent about what we truly believe is right about voting Republican and supporting the Republican presidential nominee. Please note that as long as your convictions for voting Republican and supporting Donald J. Trump do not contradict rightly divided biblical truth, you are free to use the complete freedom Christ gave you and me as further occasion to make it known that there is still a God in heaven who cares about good and evil and who even uses the foolish things to confound the wisdom of the wise sometimes. Yahweh knows that this fallen world will never totally conform to his will until his son, the truly God and truly man, Christ Jesus, returns. And when he does, he will put down all rule, authority, principality, and power and bring forth new heavens and a new earth where only his righteousness dwells. And that's what we look forward to. Until then, beloved, let's keep standing for truth, preaching the gospel, and taking moral and spiritual territory as lights of the world. And let us, as the salt of the earth, flavor and preserve as much of that territory as we can with the savor of Christ until he comes or calls us home. Let us determine not to be conservatives who are Christians, but true Christians who are conservative, even if conservatism itself gets redefined. We are not in these earthly battles alone. If we are, then where, pray tell, do we take the wicked imaginations we're casting down and the high thoughts that try to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God? Well, we take them to the God who himself has said, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. You see, beloved, Jesus Christ is with us always, even until the end of the age. 
just ultimately remember that it is not about America. It is not about Trump or Biden. It is always about what is good versus evil in the sight of God. And we need never be ashamed of standing for that. Pray for President Trump and for all who might need salvation in Christ. And as for Trump, I truly believe that God is working on him, especially since that 13th of July attempt on his life. Ultimately, only time will tell for sure. Pray that he and everyone he leads and influences will hear the gospel of Christ, if need be, and repent and believe and be saved by it. And until further notice, and unless God shows me otherwise, I will see you at the polls where, Lord willing, I will be unreservedly voting red once again. God bless. <music>